Hello there and welcome to the Mobile Academy and if you want to become a job ready Flutter developer make sure to check out the courses on my website mobileacademy.io here you will find all of the courses related to the Flutter development you will find the professional course as well as the basic course related to the Flutter you can also find some of the uh, free courses over here if you want to just go and try it out or if you are just a beginner on the Flutter and then the React Native you can also find the free course over here and if you would like to be a full stack developer we also have the course related to the full stack developer related to the uh, node.js express mongodb as well as the flutter over here and if you would like to join the uh, flutter bootcamp there is also a bootcamp course over here so make sure to go and check out the course over here there are free and then they paid codes and if you want to be a job ready flutter developer this is the course that you would want to take so see you guys on the next lesson till then have a great day let us learn about the state management solution in the flutter using the rebob pod over here you may have already used the other packages or you may have also used the uh, flutter in bench solution right inherited we get set states right the stateful we get and all of that stuff and uh, here we will be using the uh, flutter river pod to maintain or to manage our application state over here and this is a beginner friendly course so you don't have to know anything about the river pod or the flutter river pod or how to use it so we'll get started from the scratch over here so it's completely uh, beginner friendly over here so let us get started over here and the first thing we'll go to the pub.dev over here and search for the flutter report over here and if you go to this particular package over here you will see that it is a reactive caching and then the data binding framework over here and also they have the official doc over here or the official site so you can just go over here and uh, read the documentation as well so it's always good to read the documentation before you are going to implement in your application. So whenever you are adding any of the uh, packages, not just the uh, river pod or the flutter river pod, any packages that you are going to add, it's always a good practice to come and read the documentation and you can always go and see like whether it is suitable for you, whether it's going to solve your problem, like your use cases and all of this stuff so you just need to read the documentation and understand it how it works properly so let us go back to the uh that the day over here the first thing that you need to do is you need to go to go and read the documentation next let's see what it provides uh, it makes uh working with the asynchronous code a bridge by which basically means that it's much easier to work with the asynchronous code using the flutter river pod over here like handling the error states right so you have the error states you have the loading state you have the data states and all of those um can be uh quite uh troublesome to maintain if you are if you want to manually maintain all of those stuff but using uh the river pod it's quite easy so later we'll go and see how we can we'll be maintaining the error state loading state right so you don't have to manually handle all of those stuff and it also natively supports the advanced scenarios such as pull to refresh and the separating the logic from your UI as well. So we all know that uh, it's not a good practice that it's not a recommended way of adding your logic to the your UI. UI also should always be separated, right? Uh, UI should not hold any of the logic, um, right? So that's the separation of concern, right? So we usually, once we are learning the uh, clean architecture, we come through all of those principles. And ensure your code is also of the testable, uh, scalable, and as well as the reusable. Basically a clean uh, architecture is meant. So you, you, your code will be much cleaner, right? So clean basically means that it is easy to test, easy to maintain, right? and or you can also call it if you are using some kind of the layer architecture it will be also much more easier to maintain it and um you can go and read the documentation over here right and also go and read it from the official uh, website 
let's go and get started with the installation over here you can just go and see the uh, example over here if you want to take a look over here but let's go and, and grab the go to the installation and before we can install this what we need this we need to create the project over here so let's go and create the flutter create over here and i'm going to create the new flutter project i'm going to create an empty one so i don't want a counter default counter app so let's just go and um, remove that and let's just go and add the empty one and let's just call this one as a riverport beginner i guess that should be fine so let's just go and riverport beginner and let's okay so once it is added what i need to do is i can just go to this particular or I open it in the vs code so cd and just go and open up using the code dot thus it's open up my vs code over here so i don't need this one anymore so let's just go and close that one i can directly use it from the um the vs code over here so let's just go and open up the terminal over here in case we need it and let's go to first thing that will do is we'll go to the pub spec that the yaml file this is where we need to add the dependency so if you are not a complete beginner in the flutter you should already know what is the dev dependency and uh, what is the dependency and what is the dev dependency and all of this stuff right so environments and all of this stuff so we'll just go and grab the dependency from here and uh, we'll come back over here and we'll put it inside the uh, dependency because that is what we require and uh, here i'll also add the uh, link over here so basically to link to this particular documentation so or the um the pub that they've over here so in case in your team anybody doesn't uh, if anybody doesn't know or if you want to read the documentation it will be much more easier to come and open it from here and go through the documentation instead of coming and searching over here and all of that stuff since uh, um, this is the way that i basically use for a, all of my projects so i just add the link over here since it is much more easier for me to come and uh, open up the documentation whenever you want to read or uh, 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 the certain kind of the documentation so that's the thing that we have to do once we add that what we'll do is let's just go into the terminal over here and let's just go and run the flutter uh pub get command over here and it should get that particular dependency so once we have that dependency added we are good to go so let's go to the lib folder over here and i guess it's a bit smaller so let me try to uh, zoom a little bit over here that may be a uh, quite bigger but i guess that should be fine so let's just go to the here and in this one what i need to do is i need to go to the run app over here the first thing is the in the run app if you go to the example as well you will see that the we need to add this one so adding a provider scope enables the provider for the entire project so if you want to use the um the river port in inside of your entire application then in the run app we need to uh, before returning your main uh, the metro app then you need to wrap that one with the provider scope so in this way that you don't have to add the each of the uh provider or each of the dependency manually like if you are using the flutter block you just have to add right so each and every provider that you have you have to come and add it over there but using this particular uh, provider scope uh, so we don't have to do all those uh, manual stuff adding it manually over here so once we add the provider scope it, you are good to go so now you can access the provider anywhere from your application so that is what we are going to do so let's just copy this and uh, let's just go and paste it over here and we need to import the flutter river pod over here and currently we don't have the my app it is the main app that we have so let's just go in that and if you go to the documentation and if you see the dependencies that it has it has the dependency to the collection flutter meta river pod as well as the uh, state notifier and uh, the the dependency that you see is the river port so let's just go and open up that the river port itself and if you go over here you can see that the uh, dependencies is on the collection meta stack trace state notifier and all of the stuff over here
So if you want to use it purely in the Dart application, then you can you need to use the uh, river pod. But since we are using it with the Flutter, we need to use the Flutter river pod. So don't get confused over there whether I should use a river pod or I should use a, a, a the Flutter river pod. So if you are using it with the Flutter, then uh, obviously you need to use the Flutter river pod. But if you are using the in the purely Dart code, then you have to use the uh, river pod. That is what we have over here. If we go over here and you can just go and open up that one. And that is the um, the river pod. Then if you want to use it in the purely in the Dart code. Let's go back over here. Another thing I want to mention is the Flutter uh, river pod or the river pod or the Flutter river pod is the successor for the provider. So if you have previously used the uh, provider, right? So welcome to the river pod and previously uh, if you see the, and there was a one more package which was the provider and uh, if you are still using the provider it's uh, you should migrate it to the robot so basically you can think that the the improved version of the provider is the riverbot so uh, it has a lot more functionality compared to the uh, provider itself both of them are maintained by the same uh, developer over here so just go and read through this particular documentation that's why I, uh, I mentioned as previously that you should read the documentation and understand it correctly right don't try to use it blankly or without understanding any of the concept so it's uh, you can just think that the uh, the improved version of the provider is the river port so if if you are if you are familiar with the provider that's perfectly fine then uh, let's go back over here enough talk over here let's just go and do some practical over here so once we have wrapped the uh, the provider right what we'll do is now we can use any of the provider that we create but first of all let's just go and create the one new folder and let's create some test examples so let's just create the screen over here and inside of this particular screen let me create the uh, counter uh, let's say this is of the screen Right, so S C R E E N dot the dot file over here, and uh, before I go and write the code, I want to show you some of the extension that I'm using. The first thing is I'll be using the Codemum AI uh, coding autocomplete over here. So this will help me to do some of the autocomplete in the code. I see a lot of the people complaining that I'm just um, the time uh, I'm not uh, writing any code, right? It's just copying and pasting, but it's not. I'm actually not copying and pasting the code. It is actually done by the autocomplete of the AI coding using the Codemon. It's basically a free tool that you can add to the extension if you haven't used it before. Uh, you just need to create an account with the Codemon AI and then you are good to go. So you can uh, use it freely in your uh, project. So uh, this is pretty good. I have been using it for more than a year already and I have no complaint about it. So it's uh, really helpful if you are if you want to create your project or work faster. AI is the way to go, right? Whether you like it or not, AI is the future. So uh, we should always go and uh, see how we can utilize it. But uh, what we'll do is uh, I'll be using the Codemum over here. So if you haven't, you can just go and sign up to the uh, codemum.com, create the account and log in it over here. So this is the one tool and the next one will be of the, I have the Flutter River Pod snippet over here. This is the one that I'm going to use over here. This will help me to create the widget faster. Like if I want to create the stateful, um, the consumer widget, I can just go and type this one. So it has a lot of the circuits for me to create the code snippets and make sure to install uh, this too uh, if you don't want the uh, the coding MMI that's still fine but I'll be using that too over here so uh, let's go and grab that one over here so I'm, I'm going to use it the stateful so if you go and see the um, I, I need to use the uh, stateful right so stateful consumer so let's just go and create the um, from the river pod stateful uh consumer so i guess it's not over here so i'll just go and say the uh consumer uh, why i'm typing the equals to over here 
consumer stateful so it's st full consumer over here so let's just go and add that one and let's say add the counter screen so that should be fine and i need to import the flutter river part over here so let's just go and import that and i also need to import the uh the material package over here let's go and import that one so once we have imported all of those we have the imported the flutter river part so you can see that basically if you don't have this this will be a stateful widget but if you want to use it with the um the flutter river part we need to add the consumer over here consumer stateful widget like it's same as the uh using as the uh the stateful widget so if you go and open up the documentation you will see that it's also extending the stateful widget so it's just going to add some extra functionality over here but at the end it's also making use of extending the same flutter default stateful widget so don't get confused over here the consumer stateful widget is same as using making use of the stateful widget but uh, once we are extending we can add some of the extra functionality over here that is what we are going to get like we are going to get the ref right using the ref to access these the consumer i like the provider and all of those stuff so don't get confused uh, over here so we can also use all of these like the set state init state like if you want to use the init state right and if you want to use post the uh dispose all of those is over here because it's the same concept over here or, or we are basically extending the uh the best stateful we get over here so let's just go and create one end of the uh, local variable let's just go and create the so i can see that you can see that i created um autocomplete over here that's because the codimum is helping me to do some kind of the auto completion now let's just go and create this one as the uh, private variable and once we have that i guess you know, we are not going to use it for now so i can just go and uh, remove that and in the container so let's just go and add the uh, scaffold and let's just go and add the app bar and in the app bar i'm going to just going to add the some the default one so let's just go and say the a title and the title will be of the const of the text over here and i'll just go and say the counter the screen over here okay case so it's not the screw so str is screen over here uh scre and screen i guess that should be fine and once we have that we just go and add the uh, body over here and in the body let's just go and add the uh, column so this is a simple column with the some text over here and let's just go and add so you can see that i have some auto completion uh, using the codimum ai tool so i don't have to go and type all of this stuff so you have pushed the button this many times and i'll just go and add my under a dollar the underscore the counter so let's just grab that particular counter variable so i need to remove the cons from here and the text counter style and then this is not the text theme uh, dot the let's say a uh, body um let's say a body medium i guess that should be fine so that should be fine so we have that and in the bottom app bar uh let's just go and add the floating accent button over here and now you can see that um i have got some auto completion over here that's perfectly fine and i guess this is the closing of this one and okay so this one is closed somewhere over here the floating accent button uh let me just close it somewhere over here again and i guess this is not over here and i need to close it over here okay so that's fine so now you can see that we have some power over here i can auto complete and i don't have to type much of this stuff because this is not completely a basic code so it's not regarding uh right creating your floating a uh, floating accent button creating a column you should be a little familiar with that one right so if you haven't then make sure to go and check out my free course i have already created the flutter basic course and uh, where i have mm, like, i have where i have taught all of those stuff right so this is not a completely a, a basic course over here so you should already know the floating accent button uh, like the column scaffold app bar and all of this stuff this is a state management uh, class over here so once we have that i'll just go and wrap this one with the row 
and uh, once we have that i'll just go and copy this and i'll just go and add the um, below over here and i guess that should be fine and for this particular row currently the main axis alignment is of start uh let's just go and set the uh, main axis alignment to be of the main axis alignment at the center and this one should be one should be of the increment one should be a uh, decrement over here so we don't want to do the increment for both of those button one should be of the increment and one should be of the decrement right so this is a counter plus plus and then the minus minus will be so we are basically the default uh, the flutter set state we are using and later we'll try to convert it to using the flutter uh, flutter river part over here for now but let's just go and make use of the set state so we know uh, how we can change it or how we can replace this particular code using the river part so let's go to the debug uh, over here run and debug and let's create the lunch.json from here this is going to create us the uh, vs code that the lunch that's the setting file the json file and using that we can just go and run that one so i'll just go and select the one of the running device over here and let me just go and run this particular project over there and once the application is running we are going to get the hello world so i guess i forgot to replace this one from here so i need to replace this one from here that will be of the uh, counter screen over here so let's just go and replace that and that should be fine so now we are here and uh, let's go and see that we have this but uh, it's not looking good so let's just try to create the size box of the width is of 10 this is of the autocomplete as well so now we got that and this should be of the uh, minus so i guess we don't have the minus so let's just go and add the minus minus over here so we got the minus and as well this is not the perfectly a uh, good ui but it's not the course is not related to the ui as well uh, so we'll be just uh, see how we can um, write the code for our state management solution right uh, so let's just go and increment so you can see now it is increasing and now we can see it's decreasing so that's a simple set state but let us try to convert it uh, to um, using our, uh, the flutter river part there are a couple of all the different ways to do that one but we will be using one very simple way of maintaining the state in the flutter river part so if you go to documentation you will see that there is a state provider and uh, in the state provider it's a provider that exposes a way to modify its state so it is uh, basically a, provides a way to uh, modify your state it is a simplification of notifier provider so if you have previously used a notifier in the flutter right and designed to avoid the having to write uh, uh, the notifier change notifier or notifier provider right so if you have used that one it, you can see that this is just a simplification of that one state provider exists uh, primarily to allow the modification of the simple variable so here uh, we just need to have a simple variable like a boolean or you can see that you can have the enum you can have a string boolean number right it's not for the complex data type but just for a single like a uh, counter just holds a number right so that is what we are going to use so make sure to go and read the documentation over here so you should use the state provider if your state needs a validation logic your state is uh, uh, like the complex objects or such like. so if you have some uh, you should not use it sorry it's you should not use it you cannot or you don't it's not recommended to use the state provider if you have some validation logic you have a complex um, the object and complex uh, logic over here so at that time so if you just have a simple like the counter we just have to store some number a single number right so let's go back over here and uh, let's go and create that one over here so we'll i will just go and create in the same file or if you want you can just go and create the new folder over here and providers over here inside this provider i can create a new file counter uh, let's see a uh, state and that will be of the uh, provider or counter provider or something so let's just go and create the dart file over here and the first thing that we need to do is let's create the final and then the uh, counter uh, let's say state provider or the counter provider over here 
and that is of the state provider over here and I need to import the flutter river pod over here so this is a state repo, uh, state provider uh, make sure to go and read the documentation over here and once we have that this is going to return as the default of the zero right so once we have this particular state provider and um, once we have wrapped our the main app with the provider scope we should be able to use it in our application so let's go to the counter screen over here now let us go and uh, remove all of this one from here so i don't want to have the set state i don't want to have a set state over here as well and now once we have the counter and um, let's say um, let's say our default variable of zero as well so let's go over here and we need to watch that particular so final uh, or I'll just go and remove this one since I'm not going to use it out of this particular uh, the build method uh, I don't need to access this anywhere so let's just go and say the uh, this is of the counter so I have a counter I need to use a ref over here right ref is coming from the um, this particular flutter repo part and since we are using the consumer uh, stateful we get it provide us with this particular so that's why we are extending the consumer because we need to uh, make use of the ref to access any of the provider so whenever there is any provider that you need access we need to use a ref over here the ref object help us to uh, access that one so ref dot and i need to watch this one so watch uh, watch basically means that you want to continuously monitor that one right so monitor this particular provider whenever the state changes uh, then go and uh, watch that one so whenever the state change then this is going to rebuild this particular uh, widget all right so um, let's say now let me import this one and let's close it now you can see this is the int counter right so this is of the int this is going to return us that particular state provider and they type each of the int over here we haven't explicitly mentioned but if you want you can also go and explicitly mention the type of the int but since we are returning a type as a data data type as the the uh, number over here then it's going to be a uh, int by default the type inference the dot type inference that it, it can automatically detect that we are returning a number or an integer from here so then let's go back over here now we have this particular counter right and now I can go and make use of this counter over here right and now if I go and rebuild this one and if I go and open up my device so now we should see a default of the zero because that is what is coming from this the state provider the default values of the zero so how can I improve or how can I increment and decrement that one so let's go over here and I'll just go and say the I need to on press ref the read and uh, here i need to access the counter uh, state provider dot the notifier right and then the state so once i have that particular state now let me just try to hard reload and now you can see that it is incrementing right isn't that cool so let's just go and do the same thing over here so ref dot the read over here and uh in the i need to grab that this particular once more time and then then the uh, uh notifier itself right and then the state minus minus so let's just go and hot reload and now i can increment and decrement over here so that's cool so now we have the option we have one a very simple state provider that is providing us the counter and using that counter we are watching what basically means that we want to rebuild our widget whenever the state value changes so this is going to give us the updated value over here and um, the best way of using it inside is inside of the build widget so you cannot go and use the ref dot the watch outside of this particular build widget why because that's going to cause some kind of the problem or it may cause a memory leak or unexpected behavior because um the if you go and read the documentation you will know that the ref dot was should only be used in the build so that's why it's uh important to go and read the documentation about the watch so make sure to go and read the documentation about the watch where you should use it when you should not use it and all of this stuff 
So once we use it over here, it's going to rebuild our widget once a, every time the state value changes. And here we are re using the read over here in the button click because that is what we have to do. So we cannot use the watch over here. So we don't have an option to watch. So we, we don't want to watch anything uh, once we click this particular button. We already are watching over here, right? And in the uh, the button press, you should always you use the read over here because there is no point of watching over here. And this is just a fire and forget. So refted read is something like you fire and forget. But here, refted watch basically means that you are continuously watching, right? Fire and watch, right? So listen it over here. There is also option to listen, but later we'll go and see about that. I guess you got the point uh, about the uh, basic understanding about the ref dot watch, and then the ref dot the read over here. And to know more about this one, make sure to go and read the documentation about the state provider, as well as the uh, something related to the ref dot read, and then the ref dot watch over here. So if you just go and copy this, and if you want to find the documentation over here and then this is the one so you should go and read the documentation i'm not going to read it for you make sure you go and read that one and also about the uh, same thing about the ref dot read and ref dot the watch so that is your homework so this is just the first part and i uh, will uh, i will come back with the another lecture very soon so let's meet up in the uh, next uh, lesson and where we'll learn some more concept about this uh, river pod and till then have a great day.